Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, Merry Christmas, and welcome to online worship with Orange Beach Presbyterian Church. Yes, it is still Christmas. We are in the season of Christmas, those 12 days that go from Christmas morning through Epiphany, which is January 6th. Next week, January 9th, uh, that is the worship that we will be talking about Epiphany. We will be handing out our star words. If you've um, been here before for our past Epiphany services, uh, you'll remember that we hand out stars. You sort of randomly get a star with a word on it, and you are invited to take that word um, and just meditate on it in the coming year. Look at it, see uh, how God might be speaking to you through that word. If you would like a word to be randomly generated for you, just let me know. You can call or text me. You can email the church office. You can, however you'd like to get in touch, just, or you can comment here. Just let us know that you'd like a star and we will do that for you. Um, again, it's just sort of randomly pulled out and you see what, what your word, your star word might mean for you in the coming year. Uh, but today we are still in Christmas. Today is also a communion Sunday. If you haven't already, um, perhaps during the first hymn, uh, you could just run to your kitchen and grab some bread, some crackers, any bread type product, and then some juice or some wine, even a glass of water would be fine. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper toward the end of the service so you do have a little bit of time to get those elements ready so that we can all sit at the table and share together. But now we will begin our worship service and we begin with our call to worship. All of the words that you will need for today will appear on your screen as you need them. So I hope that you will join us and worship loudly and generously, extravagantly and joyfully. Let us begin. However far we have wandered from God, God comes to find us and gather us in generous love. However broken we have become, God comes to heal us and make us whole in hope. However empty our spirits may be, God comes to feed us until we are filled to the brim with grace.
Let us now go into a time of confession. We'll pray first silently, and then we'll pray together with the words found on your screen. It will, of course, be followed by the assurance of pardon. Let us pray. And let us pray together. Gracious God, we admit that we always find the time to fill our stomachs, but not our souls. We spend hours watching our phones and computers, but not the wonders of your creation. We arrange outings with our friends, yet ignore your invitation to sit and talk. We make resolutions to change every aspect of our lives, except for that which pertains to you. Forgive us, O oh God, and make us new. In the moments to come this year, remind us that if there is a time for everything, then we do have those moments for grace, for hope, for joy, for a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace upon grace, mercy upon mercy, hope upon hope. These are the gifts God pours out onto us this moment and all of the moments of our lives to come. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Before we hear God's written word, let us turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, how we thank you for this morning, for this time together, gathered up from here and there and everywhere, some in the sanctuary, some in their homes, maybe some at work or at play, but all of us pausing together to take some time to worship you, Lord, to sing your praises, to pray to you, to hear your word. This community of faith, our siblings in Christ, cannot be separated by distance, for we are united in you. And Lord, we pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, opening our ears, our hearts, and our minds, so that we will hear your voice as we hear your word. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as together we pray how he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of John, the first chapter, the first 18 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all people might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every person was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, 
children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of a spouse's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the creator, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the beginning was the Word. That is how the book of John begins, the Christmas story. We typically hear Matthew or Luke on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day. We remember the story of Christmas because they give a lot of the details that we like as humans. When somebody mentions something has happened, we want to hear the story behind it. And in Luke and in Matthew, we hear some of those details. In Luke especially, we hear about Mary being told of her pregnancy. Uh, We hear of the angel that appeared to her and then to Joseph. We hear of what happened with Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary visiting Elizabeth, and then we get the setting for the birth of Christ, born, placed into a manger, wrapped in claws, and the shepherds, alerted by angels, hearing the songs of the heavenly host all around them, singing glory to God. And the shepherds go to see the baby. It's a wonderful story. I love the Christmas story, and I think probably most of the world is familiar with it. Even those people who don't celebrate Christmas or who perhaps aren't Christians are probably familiar with that. Maybe uh, Peanuts and made that the most famous with their Christmas pageant and Linus dropping his blanket and speaking those words. But here we have the Christmas story from John. John doesn't really tell a concrete story. There are no details. He doesn't mention Mary or Joseph. We don't hear about Zechariah and Elizabeth. We just hear this poetry. The book of John is beautifully written. In the beginning was the Word. This is telling us that Jesus existed before God sent him down as a baby. 
He was with God from the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, Word. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. He was with God in the beginning. It cements Jesus in as being the Word. Again, capital W, the Word. Truth, capital T, truth. And through him all things were made. In Jesus was life, and that life was the light of people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Uh, lights are prevalent at Christmas time. I mean, my daughter Haley and I, we drove around looking for Christmas lights, and boy, did we ever see some really spectacular displays. Town displays and neighborhood displays are a couple of houses that just do a huge decked out light show, sometimes set to music that you can hear on your radio. And we would go and just look at the lights and hear the music. One year we went to Hank Aaron's stadium in Mobile where they have a big drive through. You, you drive through the parking lot of the stadium. They have all of these lights set up. The very first time we did it, uh, it, we went on my birthday. My birthday's in December. So we went. I said that was my only birthday wish is to go see these lights. And it was so beautiful. I cried. I just, I just sat in the front seat and cried while we drove through. Love these lights. But if you've ever wondered why we put out Christmas lights, this is why. Because Jesus is the light of the world, the light of people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Now, when you look at how dark it is in December, I mean, in the United States, we go through this time change, most of the states, where, you know, suddenly it's getting dark at you know, six or seven, and then suddenly you have the time change, plus the days are getting shorter. Next thing you know, it's 4.30, 5 o'clock, you leave work, and it's dark already. The good thing about that at Christmas time is it gets dark early, but you get to see the Christmas lights. I know where all the good ones are. I know where to look as I drive here and there in the dark with the light shining out. We could take a, a clue from that, couldn't we? In the winter, when it gets dark early or at Christmas time, people put out their Christmas lights. It's the best time to see them because you get the most amount of dark. And they represent the light of the world. They represent Jesus Christ. What if we, as Christians, were bold enough to take light into darkness and to be deliberate about it, to be intentional about it? And, and I know that's a little bit scary. When you think about walking through somewhere in, in the pitch black, you know, sometimes if I'm at church late at night, I'll shut off all the lights and I shut off the lights in the fellowship hall, but then I have to walk through the entire fellowship hall to get to the outside door and it's pretty dark and I'll turn on the light on my phone to make sure I don't run into a chair and stub my toe. But let's talk about how many people just run into the dark. You're always fumbling for some kind of a light switch. And let's talk about a spiritual darkness. How many of us run into that kind of darkness? If you have a friend or a loved one, if you know anybody, who is immersed in a dark time, do you bring them a light? You know, after hurricanes, when we, everybody loses power and your power is out for a week, you hear the hum of generators, but late at night, most people shut their generators off to go to bed, and it's very, very dark. It's a dark like you don't usually see, because not only do you shut your house lights down when you shut your generator down, but there's no street lights, there's no city lights glowing up. The sky is so dark. And you discover that that is an amazing time to see the stars. You can see stars that you just didn't even notice before because there's no ambient light. 
Sometimes the darkness is a wonderful time to see light where you haven't before. And I'm not advocating that we plunge ourselves into darkness on purpose. <laughs> but when we're talking about like a spiritual or an emotional kind of a dark time in your life, sometimes you need to look for the light. And sometimes we Christians need to be the bringers of that light. So how do you let it shine? Well, here is the good news. You don't have to generate it in yourself. Look, listen to the words of John. In Jesus was life, and that life was the light of people. Right? We don't have to generate some kind of light within ourselves. We have the light of Christ. We just have to reflect it. We need to be like a mirror. We need to be like the surface of the moon. You know, the moon doesn't light up. The moon reflects the light of the sun. And when we look up into the sky and we see a moon, whether it's a, a sliver, crescent moon, full moon, somewhere in between, that is the reflection of the sun. We need to be the reflection of the sun, S-O-N, sun. We need to take the light of Christ and bounce it back into the world. And the world really needs it. Whether they know it or not. And here's more good news. When you reflect that light, that is all you are responsible for. You are not responsible for personally uh, bringing people into the church, although it's great to invite them and hopefully they'll come. You're not responsible for changing hearts. That's God's job. We are just responsible for reflecting the light, the true light that gives light to every person. That's what Christmas is about. Christmas is a season, again, it's the 12 days that leads up to Epiphany. And then it doesn't just stop. We need to be Christmas 365 days of the year. We need to be reflecting the light of Christ into the world. And we need to be angling ourselves like you would angle a mirror so that light bounces into the darkest corners. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying we can fix everything. But when you look at the beauty of John's language, it makes it seem possible. And to refer back to Luke, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Jesus was in the world. Jesus came into that which was his own. Jesus came into the world. But he wasn't received by everyone. Even Jesus Christ, face to face, walking the earth, gathering disciples, preaching and feeding, people still rejected him. People from his own hometown rejected him. They didn't see who he really was. They saw who they thought he was. So take some of the pressure off when it comes to reflecting the light of God into the world. It's pretty simple, really. I mean, Jesus left us with the one commandment, to love one another, right? I mean, that's all he said. Jesus just said, love one another. And in doing that, we are reflecting the light. We are bringing hope into places that may seem hopeless. And we're not doing this alone. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Born of God, children of God, that's us, that's me, and that's you, and that's all of our siblings in Christ. One big family, one body of Christ. I mean, we, we worship differently. We have different denominations, different churches, different congregations. But we are one family of God in this together. And when I'm in a period of darkness, bring me your light, please. 
If I see you in a period of darkness, I'm going to come running with my light. And maybe several of us together are all in a place where we can say, how do we bring some more light into the community or to this family or to this program or what have you? We're all in this together. We're working as a family. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, made his dwelling among us. This is unbelievable. God is not, you know, some God over unreachable and touchable. God sent Jesus. We just celebrated his birth. And, and God sent Jesus so that Jesus could feel what we feel and go through what we go through and know what we know and be one of us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only. And then it says, John testifies concerning him. John the Baptist, remember, cried out, prepare the way. He is coming. I'm not him. I'm not even worthy to tie his sandals, but he is coming. And then we end this passage with, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ, who tells us to love one another. There is no end to the amount of grace poured out. There is no denying the truth that Jesus tells. This is such joyous, wonderful news. That is the light that we are reflecting out. When we reflect the light of Christ, we're not worried about the law given by Moses. We are worried about grace and truth shining through because that is what Jesus Christ brought and brings and will bring. And now you might be asking, All right, how do I do this? How do I reflect light into the community? How do I bring grace and truth? Well, you could start by preparing yourself. Know the truth, know grace. Read scripture, go to a Bible lesson, get an app that gives you some scripture every day, get up early and just open up the book, stay up late and read one more passage, talk about what truth is, talk to your Christian siblings, talk to your pastor, talk to your Sunday school or Bible study teachers. Prepare yourself so that you can speak truth, the real truth, not the truth that the world tells you, but the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth that is love and light and grace. And then prepare yourself to pour it out generously, extravagantly, joyfully. How much grace can we give? It's endless. We can continue to point people to the grace of God, to the love of Jesus Christ, to the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, they may or may not listen to you, but believe me, people are watching. You don't have to change your entire community, take a whole entire town and flip it on its head. It's not a Hallmark movie. Start small, start with one person, start with uh, the neighbor that you just don't really know or who always looks grumpy or maybe has just suffered a loss and you're not really sure what to say. Start with a coworker, a friend. Maybe you have a family member who needs to catch a glimpse of God. And you can be that mirror that reflects the love of Christ into their life when they desperately need it. Maybe there's a program that you want to join or start or jump into. Find one. Volunteer at the Christian Service Center or Family Promise or the Presbyterian Home for Children. These are just some of the ministries that we support, but there's a ton out there. Find one. Pray. Ask God to show you where you should start so you can begin reflecting the light of Christ into the world. 
And here's the strange thing is the more you reflect out, the more it comes back into you. Sometimes we pour out, we reflect out, we give out, and we say, okay, now I need to recharge. Now I need to rest. Perfect. Now is the time to seek other people's light, <laughs> to recharge yourself, to fill back up. And then when you are ready to pour out again, you'll find that your cup isn't half full, it's overflowing. Keep reflecting the light into the world. Keep reflecting Jesus Christ where it is needed. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let us reflect that into the world, and we will be surprised at the light that bounces around. Amen. Let us now go into a time of prayer, praying for and with one another. Let us pray. God of grace, God of mercy, we catch glimpses of you all around us. You are hard at work. You walk among us. You spur us to action. You grace us with the beauty of your creation with the wonders of your love, the miracles that we see, every time that we are laughing and celebrating, every time we catch up with good family, good friends, you are present and we are thankful for all of those blessings that you pour out upon us. But Lord, in the midst of our joy, even as we're unwinding after a, a busy season, as we're relaxing, we're feeling some sorrows too. You know what they are. But it is good that we name them to you. You're always listening. You hear the groanings of our hearts. You hear us as we cry out to you. You are big enough and strong enough and bold enough to hear our lament. And you are close enough to us to weep when we weep. Lord, today we lift up to you all of those people who are sick in mind, in body, or in spirit. And we also lift up their doctors, nurses, caregivers, therapists, scientists, lab workers, all of those people that you call and equip to work the healing arts to help make us whole again. Lord, we know sometimes you make us whole by calling us home. And we celebrate when our loved ones are with you and out of pain and out of sorrow. And yet, that puts us in sorrow, for we grieve, we mourn, we miss those people who are no longer here with us, even as we celebrate that they are with you. We are grateful that you join us in that strange place, that you comfort us as we mourn. Lord, as COVID continues on with a new variant, a highly transmissible variant, we just pray that you will reach a hand down and pour out wisdom upon your people, that we might be able to take the steps necessary to mitigate our risk, to care for our neighbor, to show love to everyone who might be affected, to be cautious with one another. And Lord, we pray for the doctors and nurses, all of the people who work, all the hospital staff. They are being overwhelmed and overrun. They are understaffed and overworked. And we just pray that you will lift them up, that you will give them energy when they need it and rest when they can. And we lift up all of those people who are struggling right now, whether it's COVID or any other one of the myriad illnesses that afflict the human body and mind and spirit. We pray for your intercession, and we pray it all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. I am here at this table. You at home have your elements at your tables. 
for right now, this table does not belong to this church. It doesn't belong to the presbytery. It belongs to the Lord. Your tables and your homes, those belong to the Lord. This is the Lord's feast. And all belong here. All are welcome to partake. If you have others in your home, please serve them as I say, this is the bread of life. Say those same words to one another. We will all eat the bread together. We will all drink together. Again, if you have multiple people in your home serving one another, uh, if you don't have multiple people, rip off the bread when it is time, drink the cup when it is time, knowing that you are joined by your community of faith. Let us pray. People of Christmas, lift up your hopes. Into the emptiness of chaos, the word carried all your hopes, scattering the seeds of goodness throughout the universe. You sent Jesus to us to gather us from the far corners of despair and loss, to bring us home to you. Holy are you in every moment, joyous God, and blessed is Jesus Christ, light and life. In the beginning, he was your word of creativity, and at our end, he is your word of hope. He came among us, gifting us with grace and truth, whispering of your great love. Though we rejected him, he continued to embrace us, knowing we were destined for adoption to be his siblings. He carried your light into the shadowed recesses of our lives. He was filled with the emptiness of death that we might receive the promise of the resurrection into life with you forever. As we begin this new year with hope, we remember his promise to be with us always. As your spirit rests upon these gifts, the bread and the cup, we pray that you would fill us with every spiritual blessing. As we taste the life in this bread, which strengthens us, we would be made aware of hunger in our world, real daily hunger for food as well as yearning for you and go to bring everyone to the feast you offer. As we drink this sweet richness of your grace, we would reach out and take the hands of all who are despised and rejected, drawing them into your dance of life. As we are filled at your feast, we would go to empty ourselves of pride and selfishness as we humbly serve that great company of the broken. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus sat at table with his disciples for one final meal together. He took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this, remember me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is a new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. And indeed, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the bread of life. Take now and eat. And this the cup of salvation. Drink and remember him. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this meal with you. Not only you, but all of the saints who went before us and the family swirling around us, this great cloud of witnesses, we eat together. And Lord, we pray that it will fill us up to overflowing, that your grace and love and goodness will pour out from us 
for all the world to see. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This concludes our worship service. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again next week. You will find us online every single Sunday on Facebook and on YouTube. We do also worship in person. Please remember that um, with our winter visitors here, we have more people than usual uh, in our sanctuary. So of course, we continue to recommend that all people wear masks the entire time they're inside the building. We will continue to have fellowship time outside. I know there's going to be days where it is cold. Um, bring a jacket so that we can be cold outside together where it's a little bit safer to remove masks and have a cup of coffee together. Um, we ask that you respect everybody's social distancing needs as we are trying to fit into the sanctuary. Um, if you sit down and somebody near you gets up and moves, that's okay. We're going to be kind and gracious with one another. And we're all going to make sure that we have the distancing that we need to keep our families safe. Um, it is okay to talk to one another about our needs and be kind and gracious in return. However you are worshiping with us, whether it's online or in person, we now come to the time where we part ways. We'll turn off our computers, our phones, our devices, and we will bring Christmas out into the real world. I'm talking the real Christmas, not the stuff and the material gifts, which are delightful, but the love of God, the love of God that is so big that God sent God's only son. We will celebrate that birth by bringing Christmas into the community. Be excited as we do this. Be bold, for as we leave, we go with God the Creator, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen.